Ten. Well, time now for our Saturday throwback when we look back at some of the stories that our newsroom was covering in years gone by. For decades, the Admiral Riverboat was St. Louis entertainment destination and a landmark. In early June of 1978, Channel 4 reporter Kathy McDonald went aboard as crews prepared for the first cruise of the season. I'm standing here on the stern of the Admiral, a familiar sight on the riverfront down here in St. Louis. I'm in front of one of three 900 horsepower engines, and it's not what you'd call one of your standard small engines, but all three of the engines are used to power the boat on her trips up and down the Mississippi. The Admiral's back in St. Louis after being in New Orleans for the winter. She's getting ready to make her maiden voyage tonight, and we thought we'd take you aboard and see what kind of preparations are being made. The Admiral holds 4,100 people, all of them planning on having a good time, and nobody really concerned about making sure he cleans up after he has that fun. So one of the biggest jobs in getting the boat ready is to make sure that everything is spit and polish and shiny bright so that when she leaves tonight, everything will be clean. As you could plainly see, people are kind of hustling and bustling around her. What's the biggest problem? In getting the thing clean. You know, uh, getting everything set up, getting supplies aboard. We only have uh, about 12 hours total before we start uh, loading passengers now. And that is cutting it kind of close. There's quite a bit of entertainment on board the Admiral, several bands and pinball machines, which are being brought on board for tonight's leaving. But there's also other things on the Admiral. She serves food and drinks, and of course those food and drinks are a major part of the preparations. We uh, take supplies almost every day. How many people do you have on board normally? Uh, on a, you mean passengers? Right. On an average trip, about 2,000. Um, will she be ready for tonight? I sure hope so. <laughs> you know, a passerby just compared the Admiral to the first Robin in spring, back in St. Louis, where she belongs, and where she's been every year since 1940. For the newsroom, this is Kathy McDonald on the Riverfront. I imagine that brings back so many memories for so many people. And when Kathy did that report, it was hard to ever imagine a day when the Admiral would not be part of the riverfront. But the very next year, the Coast Guard banned the ship from cruising. Later, it was sold with new investors pouring in millions of dollars, and it came back as a stationary entertainment venue. The Admiral did hang in one fashion or another for a couple more decades. But then in July of 2011, 10 years ago next month, it left the riverfront for the very last time. This is News 4 video of the Admiral being pushed off the riverfront. It no longer had working engines, so it had to be pushed away for the very last time. It headed then to a scrapyard in Columbia, Illinois. This final journey here marking the end of a very special era in St. Louis history. Wow. Now the Admiral just couldn't be saved. But next in our throwback segment, we celebrate a part of St. Louis history that has been preserved. In early June of 1978, our crews went to Lafayette Square, just south of downtown, to report on the house tour. The Lafayette Square house tour was relatively new then, having just started eight years before. That tour was held to promote interest in the historic homes that were there in Lafayette Park. In 1978, many visitors could hardly believe that these homes that once seemed destined for the wrecking ball were actually being restored to new glory. The reason that it is so important, so powerful, and such a stunning thing for me to see is that 10 years ago I was here on this very street and my wife and I together walked down this street and looked at these houses caving in with the windows knocked out and we decided that there was no way it could ever be brought back. And I can't believe what I'm seeing here today. That's what's stunning to me. Well, I think it's a wave that uh, is catching on all over the country, that people realize that old buildings are not dead buildings, that they can be put to good use, that uh, they can be recycled for another generation, and there's a lot of aesthetic quality to older structures, and economically they can be very viable. The Lafayette Square Neighborhood Group tells us that efforts to preserve the neighborhood got a big boost in 1972 when the city designated it a historic district. And eight years after this video was shot, 1986, Lafayette Square was listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. And today it is now a thriving residential neighborhood and entertainment district.